What's up guys, we have the Copligator back out today. Today we're gonna to be doing a range test and a full ride on this just to see how many miles we can actually go on a single charge for this. So it's gonna be kind of a long video. This is not gonna take a short amount of time. This is obviously gonna be something that uh, is gonna be kind of a, a lengthy process to uh, drain the battery on this. Before we get started, I did wanna just mention that this is a 5,000 watt scooter with a 40 amp hour battery. I am not a small rider by any means. So we are going to be testing the limits uh, of this scooter and its range. Uh, the estimated range on this is around 50 miles. That's what uh, Coppola says this should get. So before we get started with the ride, I just wanted to know what you guys thought the range was gonna be. So just take a quick second here, comment down below, let me know what you guys guess the range will be on this. So because this is going to be a long video and I know some of you don't wanna see the whole ride, I have split this up with some timestamps. Uh, I'm gonna have the intro, which is gonna give you some info on the bike. Then I'm going to have the ride section. And then at the very end is going to be the actual range uh, itself. So that'll be basically the end of my range test. That'll give you all of the uh, info that you need to know on how many miles this actually made it. So if you're interested in seeing the whole ride, just watch the whole video. It is a little bit lengthy, but uh, it's just kind of the way it is when you go on one of these rides. So I do appreciate you guys being with us. So thanks for hitting that like button, guys. And uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I do appreciate it. And it does help the channel out immensely. All right, so now that uh, everyone has their predictions on how long this is gonna go, Let's uh, hop on this thing, go take a freaking ride. So yeah, here we go. I'm gonna try to answer some questions as we're going. So uh, I did wanna note that right now we're at 193 miles and the battery shows full. So see how many miles we can go. So if you guys didn't get to see the review video on this, uh, I will leave a link to that. This is a 5,000 watt electric scooter and it has a 40 amp hour battery. So pretty big battery, honestly, uh, in comparison to some of the other scooters. So we should get pretty good range on this. It does go, you know, like mid 40 mile an hour. So we've had it around 47 miles an hour. Uh, I think they uh, say that it'll go 48 and it probably will with a smaller rider on there. The range on this um, on the website shows, I think 50 or 55 miles and that might be accurate but they do their range test basically in a perfect uh world scenario in other words you know on flat ground uh no like windy conditions and with a light rider which uh if you guys have seen the other videos i am not a light rider i'm rich and i'm dead sexy <laughs> i am definitely probably on the edge of you know, what they consider uh, the weight limit on this, which is uh, just giving you guys the real world experience. So I would think, you know, with a smaller rider, somebody like, you know, 100, 140 pounds, uh, it's gonna be a much more accurate range test for this. But uh, it's not reality for me. So I wanna know what it'll get with me on it. So that's what we're here to do today. So I'm sure the video won't do this justice either, but you can't imagine uh, how smooth of a ride this is. I mean, it's just incredibly smooth. You have no motor vibrations happening. Feel the motor running up my legs. Oh. The suspension works pretty well on this. The seat is incredibly comfortable. Um, and it's just the like the most quiet ride you've ever heard. You don't hear any motor, any noise from the motor electric weird noises everything's just super quiet super smooth thing just performs really really well performance yes uh your performance you know the um performance like sexual excuse me willie are you saying there's something wrong with my gear is that what you're saying to me um we've been really really happy with this scooter honestly and in comparison If I had to compare this to like a gas type scooter, I would definitely say that this is probably on par or very close to a Honda Ruckus. So um, I know for sure this will beat a Honda Ruckus in top speed. I haven't had a chance to actually race a Honda Ruckus yet to kind of see uh, acceleration wise, you know how they are, but um, 
I know for sure Honda Ruckus and this bike are very, very similar as far as you know top speed goes and as far as handling and just like the ride dynamics they feel like almost the same bike except obviously this one is electric which is in my opinion kind of awesome i actually like electric bikes um i'm really really into the electric bike scene so this was kind of the next step for us to have a electric scooter a little more capable a little more road worthy as far as you know headlights tail lights turn signals horn actually the horn's pretty good so i actually really uh enjoy this bike a lot i should probably mention if you guys are interested in one of these bikes i will leave a link down in the description uh it will give you 500 dollars off currently uh, which is a pretty good deal so if you're looking to get one of these now's the time i mean 500 bucks off you know 500 bucks 500 bucks so it's a pretty good deal if you guys want to take uh, and save some money you definitely can do that they do make a bunch of other bikes they make some chopper style bikes um, this is obviously their Copley Gator, which is actually one of their uh, more performance-based bikes. It's got the bigger motor, bigger battery in it, so um, that was kind of our choice. We wanted to go this route, but the other bikes are good, too. Um, I would like to get my hands on maybe one of the other bikes just to kind of do a review on it, see you know how that bike performs in comparison to this bike. So maybe we'll try to get that going uh, here pretty soon, but for now, this is our kind of go-to bike. This is our our little uh, fun scooter that we love to just kind of go around on. If you guys have seen some of the other videos, you'll know that we took this to St. Augustine, which if any of you guys have ever been to St. Augustine, it is a really, really busy city um, with a little dinky two lane road, like, you know, because it's just a super, super old city. So they never really updated the infrastructure there. So certain times of the year um, like christmas time when we were up there it's very very busy and very very difficult to get around the city so with that being said when we went up there on the e-bikes and the scooters it made our lives so much easier and it was just a much more enjoyable experience to kind of cruise around the city on the bikes so that's something that uh, i think we'll definitely be doing again it's just nice to kind of go up there and not have to worry about paying 20 or 25 dollars for parking um, and all the other logistical crap that goes along with trying to drive a car around st augustine so you know looks like we got a green light here So I have been asked a few times what needs to be done to drive one of these on the road. And uh, not a lot, to be honest with you. So in the state of Florida, at least, these are technically registered under a 50cc or under scooter. So uh, you don't have to register this. You don't have to insure this. You don't have to put a plate of any kind on this. You gotta be kidding me. You have to be 16 years or older. You do have to have a regular valid uh, Florida li driver's license, but you don't have to have a motorcycle endorsement. So it's definitely a doable uh, bike to ride legally on the street. It does, like I said, have all of your lights, your horn, everything you need uh, to be DOT compliant. So, um, you know, it's, it's definitely a cool bike. Now with as cool as this is, uh, for me, just because I like to modify everything I've ever touched, I wish this bike went a little bit faster. So it does go like mid 40s, but if I could get this bike to go 60, um, that's kind of my goal. So at some point, I want to put a 72 volt battery and controller on this and uh, maybe just see if I can get this thing to kind of cruise around 60. I think for me personally, that's kind of the comfortable number for me. But, um, you know, let me know down in the comments what you guys think if you guys would like to see something like that you know uh, one of these scooters going 60 miles an hour but um the road here in front of me is actually a 55 mile an hour speed limit i don't want to impede this traffic so i'm just going to run down the sidewalk until i get to uh the main road that i'm going to do this uh test on so but if you guys have any other questions concerns or anything 
anything you want to know about this uh, please let me know in the comments if you're looking to test drive one of these there are test drive facilities kind of all over the place uh, and actually my house is technically a test drive facility so if you're in the florida area and you want to hop on one of these just kind of take it for a cruise um, you can definitely set that up on the fanco website um, and you know actually get to ride this physical bike right here so uh, hopefully you get to do that before i modify it so so we've already gone three miles um like i said i, I think 40 miles is kind of where we need to be on this there's a lot of traffic and i am in no rush to get hit by a car today that is kind of one of the downfalls i think of having uh, an electric bike or an electric scooter like this is because there's no gas engine on this it is incredibly quiet so people on motorcycles already have a hard time with cars not seeing them so i can only imagine that a bike that doesn't make any noise uh, would be even more difficult for cars to uh, properly see so that's definitely something you want to think about when you're on something like this especially something like this that goes over 40 miles an hour i definitely think about wearing some safety gear i mean I, currently i got my helmet and everything on um, which might sound kind of ridiculous wearing a helmet on a scooter, but I promise you, if you fall off one of these or a car bumps you off one of these at 30 or 40 miles an hour, you'll be super glad that you did have some type of helmet on. So that's just my, my two cents of safety advice for you guys, but there's a lot of dumb people out there. Are you stupid or something? A lot of people on their cell phones, stuff like that. So, um, you know, you have to protect yourself you can't uh, worry about other people trying to protect you because they're they're not so this is actually one of my favorite roads to ride on uh, i take the bikes down here all the time i've ridden this scooter down here uh, quite a few times but it's really windy it's super scenic there's a bunch of really really old houses back here um, the road itself doesn't have a lot of traffic on it normally and it's right here on the river. It's just a beautiful view. You guys can see the river looks absolutely amazing tonight. It's looking good. Oh, some boats out there, man. Be a good day to be out on the water. It is a little chilly for Florida, at least. I mean, I know a lot of you guys up north uh, don't even have the opportunity right now to really go outside. It's that cold. So I'm definitely not complaining. I'm in shorts and a t-shirt right now currently and um yeah i know that a lot of you guys got some snow or you know it's getting close to zero right now and it's mid-january so definitely not complaining the weather here uh in winter time for florida is fantastic summertime a completely different story it sucks here in the summertime it's so miserably hot you don't even want to go out so um i definitely envy you guys in the summertime because you're the weather where you guys are at i'm sure is a lot nicer than it is uh where we're at so but like i said to be able to be out and weather this nice right now i'm super super thankful for so let me know down in the comments actually where you guys are from and what you guys do in the winter time uh, when you maybe can't go out on your bikes. Now I, I actually know a lot of the e-bike guys, especially the aerial rider grizzly guys, you guys are freaking maniacs, man. Out uh, in snow all the time. I always see the aerial rider grizzlies like buried in snow. So that's actually kind of cool. I don't think I would be that brave to be out riding around uh, in deep snow like some of you guys do. So if you're out there on an e-bike tearing it up in the snow, let me know down in the comments. That's freaking awesome. You guys, you guys are uh, have way more nuts than I do. You have no manners. Because I, I I like the cold and all, but I don't think I like it enough to like go trample around on an e-bike on it. But you never know. I don't know. We'll see. So. I think one thing I would like to see, um, especially from this channel and especially from Florida in general, is just a little more drive for uh, electric vehicle people, you know, electric scooters, electric e-bikes, um, to just kind of get together and do some rides. You know, they're doing a lot of really, really awesome, fun rides out in California with a lot of these different uh, e-scooters, e-bikes. And um, it's something I just don't see a lot here in Florida. So I would love to kind of get together and do some rides. So if you uh, guys are out there and you're into like the electric vehicle scene, you guys want to see or do some uh, electric vehicle type rides, man, let me know down in the comments. We'll try to, you know, get a big group together, maybe go ride around uh, somewhere local to you guys. I'm, I'm always down to take the bikes uh, somewhere else and explore some 
some different areas so or if you guys want to come down here check out some beaches some some nice water areas uh, we can definitely do that so that would be really really cool just kind of get together and do you know a big ride uh, electric vehicles are coming I think it's uh, kind of the way of the future I definitely don't think it's slowing down any I think battery technology is going to obviously get better as the years go on especially as some of the car manufacturers step into electric a lot harder batteries are gonna have to get a lot better and as car batteries get better it's going to trickle down to us uh, in the bike scooter community so But I mean, just to give you an example right there, that was a guy on a bike, couldn't even hear the scooter coming up behind him until I was really, really close to him. So um, that just gives you an idea about how quiet these are. And like I said, that's a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, I love it just because it's super quiet, super tranquil. You don't have to listen to the motor uh, all the time. Although I do enjoy engine sounds. <laughs> I'm kind of like I said, a speed freak. I love race cars and stuff like that. But sometimes when you're just out for a nice cruise like this, uh, the quietness is kind of awesome. So, but the quietness can also sneak up on you as far as people not being able to hear and see you um, and cause some accidents. So definitely be careful out there, guys. Man, look at that. It's like almost glassy. It's not quite there, but it's really, really close to being glassy. The river looks amazing, man. That's why I love this road. It's it's right here, winds down the river. It's uh, obviously you guys can tell it's a pretty awesome view. So anytime I get a chance to kind of go check this road out, um, I definitely don't mind taking a ride down here. So and because it's for a pretty good cause, you know, finding out the range on this bike, pretty excited to do it. So, So that's probably the one biggest downfall currently of electric vehicles is that you can't just stop at a gas station and fill this thing up when it dies. So knowing your range uh, on something like this or even an e-bike is pretty important. Now the only nice thing about an e-bike is if you do completely kill the battery, you can at least pedal it back like a regular bike. This thing you're gonna have to walk back, which is not gonna be fun. Uh, I'm just telling you guys right now, it's, it's not gonna be a fun walk on something like this, so. Uh, hopefully, you know, we don't run into that today. I'd really rather not walk this bike anywhere. So that's my goal today. My goal today is to go a really long way, but still make it back to the house without having to uh, walk this bike. So not that I couldn't use the exercise, but big causeway bridge there. So technically uh, where I'm at, this is considered the mainland. So when we have like hurricanes and storms and stuff, if you go over the bridges there, that will take you to uh, what we consider the barrier islands. So it's kind of why I moved out here. We get quite a few hurricanes in this area and I was beachside and it was kind of a nightmare every time a storm would come through, you got hassled about evacuating and uh, you know, who wants to evacuate their house? So. We ended up moving out here to the mainland. That way we don't really have to deal with that as much. Uh, they usually don't evacuate this area for hurricanes. So, um, you know, we get to stay, which is actually kind of cool for you guys because we do get a hurricane. I'm going to take this thing out and ride around and check out all the, uh, all the damage and stuff going on from the hurricane. So they really don't like you being out in cars, but they, uh, they're not going to say anything about the bikes So. Although I'm not sure how much fun this thing's gonna be in hurricane type conditions, but I guess we'll find out. Well, maybe. Green lights, man. Everywhere I look, just green lights. It's been great. Let's go down here and see if we can get in some trouble. So we've gone, what, like six miles so far? Long way to go still. You guys can hear too, um, when I'm on the brakes, this does have regenerative braking. So uh, it basically turns the motor into a generator when you're on the brakes and puts a little bit of that power back into the battery. Uh, it's definitely not like a, a savior or anything, but uh, it does help a little bit. So, wow, this side looks a lot nicer, huh? It's like a glass. I mean, it doesn't get much more picture oh, <laughs> picturesque than that. that is, beautiful sight 
It does look like we got a pretty good fire going over there though. You can see it way off in the distance. Um, at least I can. I don't know how the GoPro is gonna pick up uh, that. It's a lot of dynamic range for a GoPro. Uh, we are on the brand new GoPro Hero 10 in case you guys were wondering which camera we're using. Uh, I'm also using the Hero 9, but as like a backup. So, um, you know, just in case you guys are kind of wondering what I'm shooting on, it is a GoPro. But the new GoPro is pretty nice. Uh, it doesn't have a mountain of dynamic, dynamic range. Uh, obviously, the sensor on it is still fairly small. It is a GoPro. So it's not gonna be um, as good as my big Sony camera or anything like that, but it does a pretty decent job actually. And probably one of the best things about it is the stability. So uh, just that, it kind of blows my mind as far as GoPro goes. You know, you get, a, you get a $400 GoPro and they're able to stabilize the footage in the camera so good that it looks like it's on a gimbal, yet you can spend $3,000 on a full frame Sony camera and they can't even come close. That kind of blows my mind that, you know, they haven't been able to put that technology into these bigger cameras because GoPro's doing it with a small crappy camera. You would think that you could do it with a big camera, no problem. So I guess they were in a hurry because I'm going over the speed limit right now, but. So you guys probably noticed some of the houses back here are not on the small side, so. There are some massive houses back here. It's just kind of cool to just cruise around, you know, see what's going on back here. So I actually really enjoy this road. I really enjoy this ride. This is really awesome. You can see the elevation change now. We were pretty much flat with the river. Now we're, I don't know, probably 20 feet up over it. So it's got some nice elevation change. Like I said, some beautiful houses. I mean, look at that monster. Woo. I don't know what these guys do, but they got better jobs than I do. They probably don't have as much fun though. <laughs> I will say one thing about riding around on this is you get a lot of looks, man. A lot of people looking at this going, what the heck is it? Um, they just, you know, it looks like a bike, but they don't hear any noise from it. So at some point they figure out that it's electric and then uh, I do get stopped a lot. People just want to know, you know, more info and stuff about it. So, um, you know, that's why I do these videos. I usually refer people to the video just so they can get as much info as they need. Uh, plus that way they have that link at their disposal if they decide that, hey, this is, you know, something that I would like. So these aren't for everybody. I mean, this is, if you're into electric vehicles and you don't mind the fact that you don't have like an endless range, you can't just fill this thing up whenever you want, uh, they're awesome. But some people, it's just, it's not for them. So, and I get that and I'm not here to push stuff on people. I'm just here to tell you guys our personal experiences uh, with certain products. So whether or not you guys buy it, I really could care less. I don't, um, this is not like a business for me where I'm out trying to make money on you guys. I just want to give you guys the best information that I can possibly give you. And then you guys can make your own educated decisions from there. You know, um, I definitely do not like pushy salespeople really is something that uh, has just, I don't know, it just bothers me. And it's always bothered me. Um, I've actually walked out on car deals because I, the, the people were just so pushy. I just, just makes me so mad that I, uh, I ended up going somewhere else and getting a car, but I, uh, you know, that's something I, I'm just not into. It's, it's just not my thing. So God, this thing is so much fun, man. And it's so smooth and comfortable getting a little closer to that fire now. A little dirt bike out here running the, uh, running the road. I bet that's fun. It looks like a little 125 maybe, so. But I mean, like you said, you can tell, I mean, that was a dirt bike right there. So you guys kind of, you know, get a glimpse of what that would sound like if this had some type of motor in it. And uh, it's just awesomely quiet. Like I said, if you guys have ridden e-bikes before, it's, it's quieter than my Aerial Rider Grizzly. My Aerial Rider Grizzly makes kind of like this electric motor type noise. Uh, you don't get any of that from this. It's just stone cold quiet, which is kind of awesome. 
So we're still cruising this thing like 25, 26 miles an hour. Um, I've had it, you know, a couple different speeds, just kind of giving you guys like real world scenario type stuff. So this isn't, I never do range test at full throttle. I think that's a bad representation uh, of the bike because at full throttle, yeah, you're gonna kill the battery. It, it's kind of like wanting to know the fuel efficiency or the miles per gallon of a car at full throttle. Um, nobody, nobody really cares about that. They wanna know generally when I'm riding it like a normal uh, person, how many miles uh, per gallon am I gonna get, you know what I mean? So I promise you uh, the Camry that's getting over 40 miles the gallon, let's say is definitely not getting over 40 miles the gallon at full throttle. So, uh, and that's not a number that people wanna advertise because it, it doesn't normally make a lot of sense. So they just wanna give you the average number. So, and that's what we're gonna do today. You know, this is gonna be varying speeds. Uh, I will say that I am testing the limits uh, of the weight capacity. So as far as range goes, the biggest factor to range is weight. So this is already kind of a heavier bike, uh, around 170 pounds, I believe. So when you put a rider like myself on there, that's around 350 pounds, um, that's obviously at the top of the scale, which is going to give us less range. So if you're a much lighter rider, like so let's say 120, 140 pounds, you're gonna get a lot more range out of this bike because the bike's having to work a lot less hard to move you around because it's a lot less weight. So, and obviously if you had more weight, uh, you will get a little bit less range than what we're gonna be seeing here. So, but that's all kind of relative to electric vehicles. You know, the more weight you put in them, the less range you get and so on and so forth. It's just kind of the way it is. Essentially, if you're like a 140 pound rider, it's like you driving a truck. And then when you put me in it, it's like you driving a truck towing a trailer. So obviously we're getting less gas mileage now, but um, I mean, this should be basically as real world as it gets. I just can't say enough about this road and this, this ride is so much fun. And uh, like I said, the camera probably won't pick it up super, super well, but right over there in the distance is the vehicle assembly building where they actually put together uh, the rockets and the space shuttle uh, for a long time. They're doing some other cool stuff in there right now. But um, yeah, so space program happens right here. I get to see, you know, rocket launches and uh, just all kinds of historical awesomeness right here. So I definitely feel pretty blessed about uh, where we live. So this is uh, kind of where it all happens. I actually had a launch uh, yesterday, I think it was, but that just gives you guys some scope about kind of where we're at. If you have any idea about the space program or where the space program is actually happening, um, you'll know kind of at least the vicinity of where I'm at. So that just gives you kind of an idea of uh, where we're riding at today. It's a cool house. That kind of reminds me of like a Lincoln log cabin, doesn't it? The green roof and the, the kind of cabin-esque color on it. A nice house though. This is a really cool house actually. So they got the pool is out front along with the fire pit and everything else. So you basically entertain all your guests right out front, which is kind of awesome. I like it. It's like a reverse mullet and parties in the front. It's a nice little house right there. It's a nice garage on the back. That's what I'm talking about. Give me a Give me a big garage. I don't I don't need the big house. I want the big garage. So hopefully um, I've answered a bunch of questions you guys may or may not have had. Uh, if you guys have thought of some questions maybe I've uh, brought to light for you, definitely let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear you guys' questions. Um, some of the questions I don't have answers to. I actually have to go out and either do some more testing or, uh, you know, look it up, whatever. So, uh, but I don't mind doing that. I, I kind of here for you guys here to uh, learn more. So the only way you can do that is by uh, asking questions. So if you guys have some questions or anything for me, definitely let me know down in the comments. Uh, it also helps the channel out immensely. Uh, anytime you guys comment or like the videos, it uh, makes a huge difference in the YouTube algorithm. 
So uh, if you guys want to see my videos kind of rise to the top and do a little better, definitely hit that like button for us. Uh, consider subscribing as usual so you don't miss any uh, cool content out like this. And uh, definitely, like I said, comment. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Let me know what you guys thought of the video, thought of the ride, um, anything. So I do appreciate it. That's a cool mailbox. Look at that, a copper roof. A lot of people are going to that copper color on the roofs. I think it looks cool. It's got a, like, kind of a ritzy type look to it though. Tell you what I haven't seen a ton of is solar. And you would think, you know, Florida, we would have solar everywhere, but I think currently it's just a little too expensive. Um, I've actually thought about going solar myself, but it seems like it's just a little pricey right now still. So if you guys have solar, uh, let me know down in the comments, kind of was it worth it for you guys? What did you, what was your personal experience uh, with going solar? I, my house faces sunlight all day long. So as far as that goes, uh, it wouldn't be an issue. Um, and I probably need about an 18 uh, kilowatt system. So pretty good size. But uh, if you guys kind of have that same style system or same size system, kind of let me know in the comments like what your guys' uh, you know, take on that was. Was it worth it? Would you do it again? I'd definitely like to hear from you guys. So, but yeah, so you might get a clearer view there of the VAB coming through the trees here. That big white building, I'll try to zoom in, but that's actually the vehicle assembly building. It's massive. Uh, it's actually rained in there before. The, the building is so tall that the, the clouds are kind of able to move into it. So uh, it's, it's definitely a huge building. And uh, I've been in there before. There's no real floors to it. So you can literally walk in and look straight up to the top from the, from the bottom. And uh, it'll give you a little vertigo looking up that high inside of a building. It, it's definitely massive. So it's actually a cool uh, place to go. If you never checked out the Kennedy Space Center, it's definitely a really, really fun place to go check out, especially if you're into space at all. Uh, it's definitely somewhere you definitely want to check out. So 205 now. Still doing pretty good. So, what is that, 10 miles? Right? 203 would have been 10 miles to so 12 miles. Battery's still full. Brand new houses, man. Houses freaking everywhere. Housing market's crazy right now down here. I don't know what it looks like where you guys are at, but like literally my house uh, went up in value like pff, something like $60,000 like in the span of like eight or nine months. It was, it was crazy. It actually might be more than 60,000. I haven't checked in a while, but um, that's a, it's crazy right now. Like people can't even find houses. I know people that were looking for houses and they sold so fast and for over asking that the people that were looking for them didn't even have a chance to go check the houses out. So, and some people were buying houses without even looking at them. That's how crazy the market was. It was like, they knew that they were gonna sell like almost immediately. So as soon as the house went up on the market, they literally bought it without looking at it uh, to try to get into a house because that's how hard it was. So um, yeah, hopefully, you know, it slows down a little bit it's uh it's kind of crazy like i said i got some friends that are looking for houses and, and right now it's it's kind of ridiculous so i don't have any plans to sell my house so the fact that the market's going out of control way up doesn't really uh you know do anything for me but i know if you guys are in real estate you guys are loving it right now so that's awesome i mean kill it while you can right look at these trees man it's nice through here this is such a good ride and they said the weather could not be better it is like a little chilly it's probably in the 50s right now maybe 60 um so it's not cold by any means but you know on a bike at 25 28 miles an hour it gets a little wind breezy through here so uh it's not super bad but it's not it's not super warm either i think if i go on a ride in this temperature again i might throw on like a light jacket but i'll be fine I have all that extra insulation to keep me warm, like a walrus. God, 
Must be nice to live right here, man, right on the water. Damn, that one's for sale, actually. Look at these houses, dude. That's a cool front porch. I like the little front porches on it, man. Just be able to sit out here in the morning, hang out, look at the water. I mean, what a, you could not ask for a better view, you know what I mean? Might want to slow down for that speed bump, though, huh? I came out of nowhere. I mean, I didn't even see the sign on the road. I should have been looking a little better. I was gazing at houses. <laughs> comes another little speed bump kind of blends into the road it's hard to see and another massive house there thing is big man that one's got some solar on it that's a big old house back there though probably needs solar power bill is probably out of control I know, like, right now, our power bill's, like, pff, dead nuts, almost nothing, because uh, we're not running in AC, nothing like that, which is kind of awesome. Um, but, man, in the summertime, whoo, that power bill will kill you. It gets crazy and trying to cool down a house in 100-degree weather, especially uh, my house. Like, I don't have a lot of tree cover, so it's the, the sun beating on it all day long, so it takes, uh, it takes a good beating. That's crazy. We've already already reached the end of this. So we have gone. Looks like 206 on there. So we've gone 13 miles. Oh, you can count. Good for you. Man, I like to, I tell you, if you guys, you know, have the opportunity wherever you're living at right now to just get out and ride and experience, you know, some nice weather like this, man. Um, you know, I, I hope that I really wish that upon everybody to just be able to get out and uh, enjoy weather like this, man. It's absolutely beautiful, especially when you're out in the, the open like this riding. So. Like I said, I usually uh, cruise this on my e-bike. Um, but today, obviously, because we're doing that range test, I figured, hey, let's take the Coppola, go down this beautiful road, check out some amazing houses and some just awesome scenes. I mean, look at the river, man. It's so nice. So we have really, really good fishing here. It'd be kind of cool just to cruise this thing around, maybe do some fishing and stuff, uh, get into some places that you probably can't get into normally. 
uh, or just get in some places that you don't want to walk to normally. So this thing's pretty capable. We've had this off-road on dirt roads and all kinds of stuff and seems to handle it fine. Um, it doesn't have the most ground clearance. So if you're going over like a uh, real kind of weird terrain where it's got a bunch of elevation change, uh, you might scrape the bottom a little bit. So that's something, you know, you have to be a little careful on and just watch, but um, all in all, it's pretty good. It's not really an off-road scooter per se, but it does really well uh, on pretty much all road conditions. We had this in the rain before, uh, and it does really good in wet weather too. Uh, this isn't like waterproof in the sense that I would dunk it in, in some type of a, a large amount of water or drive it through some type of a large amount of water. But uh, as far as, you know, you get caught in the rain or something like that, it's no big deal. This thing will handle it just fine. It's got all weather tight connections and everything on it. So you're not really gonna have to worry about that. So um, I would definitely feel confident with this in, in a rainstorm if I got stuck in it, which we actually have, unfortunately. It's not the funnest thing be riding in the rain so any of you guys that have been riding motorcycles and stuff for a long time you'll obviously know it's just not that great so i try to avoid it whenever possible but in florida sometimes uh rain is unavoidable comes on really really quickly sometimes so road subject to flooding i bet it is being that close to the river can imagine you get a big storm in here this water just comes up here and overtakes this road so if we get a big storm this year i'll uh, i'll ride the bikes down here kind of give it a gander see what it looks like but uh hopefully that doesn't happen i don't, I don't really like hurricanes kind of sucks they come through they do a bunch of damage uh sometimes we're god bless that's a big house good for you freaking windows in that house probably cost more than my whole house but um yeah i mean you know it is what it is hurricane comes there's nothing you can do about it but i definitely would prefer not having a hurricane uh obviously it makes all of our insurances go up uh it's an absolute night so like when you guys remember a couple years ago when black friday was kind of big when people used to go to the, all the stores and it was like literally brawls at the stores trying to get a tv well when a hurricane comes that's what it's like here at like all the stores trying to get wood or sand or water or gas gas is really really crappy one that, um, especially if we get a bad storm we're like out of power oh my god it's a nightmare everyone's trying to run their generators and it's just it's an absolute nightmare uh, what what we kind of go through when we have uh, storms here. So anytime we can avoid that, I would love to. But if, you know, uh, if it does happen, if we do get a storm, I'll definitely uh, cruise down here and check it out. I mean, what else are you going to do? You can't really do anything to hurricane. Everything's closed. So. All right, super sorry about that, guys. I had to actually swap batteries on the GoPro. If you know anything about GoPros, you'll know that uh, the batteries kind of suck on them. So, it's kind of the way it is, man. But we are back on our journey and uh, 210 miles currently started at 193. So, uh, yeah, we're kind of cruising. So, three more miles, we'll be at 20 miles on this thing so far. Battery still kind of shows full, but when we accelerate, you guys will see the battery. Uh, life will go down but um yeah i mean i'm pretty happy with this thing overall i mean there's not a lot of bad stuff to say about it i mean it gets obviously pretty good range um top speed's pretty good the ride is insanely comfortable um it's just a just a fun bike to be on People getting out, doing some more biking, man. It's nice out. It's Saturday. It's a beautiful day to be out on a bike right now. So you guys will see, like right now, cruising. Uh, we we have dropped down one bar, but um, 
like I said, we are going to be close to 20 miles here soon. Right. I feel like he's gonna make me go around him. Nope. He's just gonna get the get the pathfinder out of the way there. I like it. All right, so. Could not ask for a better day to be out on a bike right now. Little hill climb here, small hill, Florida hill, but a hill nonetheless. And actually, you can see that battery drop down to one bar there, but it will come back up. That's what I mean about this thing being kind of inaccurate is that it, um, as you're uh, demanding a little more of the motor, you will find that this battery gauge just becomes pretty inaccurate where it'll show like, oh, I only have one bar, but you really have a lot more than that. Um, like I said, it's, it's just it's just not accurate. That's all there is to it. It's really really nothing else I can say other than it's just not an accurate representation of the battery uh, life or voltage. So now once we get this thing down um, past that last bar there, it will actually turn red and give you uh, this kind of like fuel light indicator. So I know from personal experience that you have about seven or eight miles ish once the little red light comes on and it will begin to flash at you at some point and at that point you have about uh two miles to make it to your destination before uh, the bike doesn't really want to accelerate anymore so it doesn't happen like fast like you're not just going to be riding this thing and all of a sudden look down and go oh it's just not moving anymore you're you're gonna know it's coming so i do kind of like that they it's not like they didn't build anything into you know letting you know what the, the battery life was you you definitely have an idea but it's just kind of a vague idea There's our little red battery life. Started to flicker on. That means we got about, I don't know, eight more miles to go. Maybe, we'll see.
it's on. Let's push it. See what happens, right? Still cruising 40, right at the speed limit. So we're at, let's see, a few miles here, we'll be at 30. I think we still got about, I don't know, eight miles of battery left in this, maybe a little more. So I think realistically, I think we're gonna get close to 40 here um, on this battery.
oh, something has happened here. So I'm at full throttle currently, and it still feels like it has some acceleration to it, but it is stopping me at 20 miles an hour, almost like it's locked into mode one. So it's definitely very, very close to dying. I do feel like we're slowing down a little bit, so this is probably the final lap here. Guy's probably tired of seeing me. He's like, what is this weirdo doing? All right, so, oh, 33. We freaking made it, bro. Oh my God, that's awesome. 40 miles. So now, let's say the test is pretty much done. So 40, 40 miles seems to be the, uh, the range of this thing um, in our test conditions today, at least. Now, now I just want to make it home. Because now I'm only getting 14 miles an hour out of it, it says. Don't wave at him. 14 miles an hour. We, we might have to walk this. I don't want to walk this all. Come on, little bike. You want to do it. Does it matter if I switch to the modes? What if I hold the mode button? Maybe it goes into like super secret mode or something. 12 miles an hour. Oh boy. Oh, I haven't pissed it off this much ever. But we did get to 40 miles, so I'm pretty excited. Now I'll be even more excited if uh, it will just limp me home. We're showing 11 miles an hour right now, which is possibly accurate. See if I let off the throttle, what happens? Oh, it, it wanted to go a little bit. But now we're at 10. Oh, oh. Go, go. Oh, I'm so close. Oh, that sounded really bad. It's okay. Come on. Oh, we're going eight miles apart. I'm so close though, I don't want to push this. I want to say that it made it home. You're doing so good. Seven miles an hour. Oh, we made it. I legitimately didn't think we were going to make it. So as you guys can see, we were able to get 40 miles of range out of this bike with varying speeds. So that's a pretty typical number I would say for this bike. I would estimate that you at home or anybody that's riding one of these should be able to get close to 40 miles on this, uh, pretty much no matter what your riding conditions are. So obviously, like I said, if you are a lighter rider, you're gonna get more range on this. Um, I'm pretty much at the top of the scale for this bike. So that was probably the worst case scenario that I could come up with. If you guys have any questions or comments below or wanna know any more information about this bike, please let me know in the comments. And as always guys, we will see you guys on the next one. Bye.